Hey everyone, Adam from Arrowworks Productions and the Arrowworks Academy. Now if you've just purchased your Phantom 4, or maybe you've had your Phantom 4 and you realize there's now an update available for that, and we show you how that works in our Phantom 4 What You Should Know video, we cover how you find out there's a firmware update. But once you find out there's a firmware update, how are you going to actually update the firmware? Now we know there's a few people have been having some difficulties with this on the forums. So we want to walk you through the steps and what you need to make sure that your firmware update is successful and we'll get you back out there flying right away. So obviously you're going to need your Phantom 4. You're going to need a charged battery. Now, you know, they say 50% or higher, just, just use a fully charged battery. The main reason for that is if for any reason the firmware update takes longer than usual and you have a less than 50% battery in there, there's a chance your Phantom could, could die while you're getting the firmware update and that will actually brick your Phantom requiring it to have to be sent back to the manufacturer. So again, fully charged battery, make sure it's charged and insert that into your Phantom 4. The next thing, make sure your gimbal guard is off. Now you always want to keep your gimbal guard on when you're traveling or carrying your Phantom around to keep that gimbal protected, but the last thing you want to do is power up your Phantom uh, with a gimbal guard on as this will cause undue stress on the gimbal motors and hopefully you get the message on the screen saying gimbal overload, but if it doesn't and you leave that on for a long period of time, you can actually wear out those motors and cause problems. So we've got our gimbal unlocked, we've got a fully charged battery in there. You're gonna need that OTG to USB cable, and you're gonna need your radio and your mobile device, your smart device, in this case we're using an iPad mini, as well as our USB to whatever your mobile device is cable. Now, to do that, we're gonna go ahead and get everything fired up and we're gonna go ahead and look for those messages that we talked about. So again, first, we wanna always start with our radio or our transmitter first. We'll go ahead and power that up. And then we'll go ahead and get the DJI Go app started. And then we'll power up our copter. And once all of those things link up, We'll go ahead and take a look at the remote controller and the software, and we'll see if there's any messages about firmware updates, either for the RC, the transmitter, or the copter itself. There we go. And under the overall status, we can see that there are some updates. Go ahead and go into those. And it tells us that the firmware requires an update, the aircraft requires an update, Download the update from the DJI Go homepage. It also tells us our IMU is warming up because this was a little bit cold when we started. So we'll let that warm up as well before we start doing any firmware updates. Alright, now the way you check to see if you have an update is by touching the center button here. And you'll see overall status. It says firmware, firmware requires upgrade. You're going to touch on that. It's then going to tell you that the aircraft requires an update. Download the, uh, download the update from DJI Go homepage. It also says the RC requires an upgrade. So you're going to download the firmware. And again, this is going to, your tablet or mobile device needs to either be on Wi Fi, have cell service, etc., in order to get uh, an internet connection, of course. You're going to go ahead and download the firmware, and we'll go ahead and walk this through the process here. Once it's done, we'll take it to the next step. All right, now our download has finished. You wanna make sure and read any notes that pop up on the screen because they may be different depending on the firmware. Now this particular one says, please don't disconnect the RC and your mobile device and make sure the RC power is more than 50%. We verified that. The upgrade takes about 10 minutes. Please don't turn off the RC during the upgrade. So a little bit different instructions here. We want to make sure to follow what they've said and not just go plugging directly into the Phantom 4. So let's go ahead and hit start upgrade. And you see that it is directly updating the RC and we have the blue light on the RC indicating an upgrade. All right, now it says the RC upgrade is complete. RC has upgraded to the latest version. Please reboot your RC. So you're going to want to power this down. And 
We'll go ahead and let it shut off and then power it right back up. Okay, now using the adapter, we will go ahead and attach our mobile device to the adapter and then plug that into the side of the Phantom 4 and wait for the next set of instructions. And there we go. And we can see that a new firmware update is available. Update now. And so we hit update now. It tells us what it is. We'll go ahead and hit update now and it's going to go ahead and start downloading uh, the package and then installing it. And of course when the update is successful, you get an update successful message and you can go ahead and hit tap complete. You can then disconnect the cables and go back to regular mode. Now one of the first things you're going to want to do when you complete your firmware update is you're going to want to go back and verify all of your settings. And this is extremely important because when you install a new firmware, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes you can actually clear out all of those settings that you set up originally. Things like the collision avoidance preferences, uh, your maximum flight altitude, your maximum horizontal distance, your return to home altitude. You want to go through and verify all of those settings that they match what you either left them at or they match where you're going to be flying at. You also want to do, I recommend at minimum, checking the IMU status, if not doing an IMU calibration. But you can start with at least doing the IMU uh, status check, and we'll walk you through that here in just a second. And you also want to finish this whole process up with a fresh compass calibration. We've had things plugged into the copter. We've been in maybe the, the office or near a computer monitor. You want to make sure when you're all done with this process and you've checked your settings in the Go app that you take it outside your flavor, favorite flying field. That's a tongueful. And you make sure you get a fresh compass calibration. That way you've then verified all the systems. You've upgraded the firmware. You've checked your safety altitudes. You've done an IMU calibration, and finally you finished it off with a compass calibration. All right, guys, well, we hope that helped you out, getting you through that firmware update for the first time on your Phantom 4. Make sure you like and subscribe to the video, and if you're looking for any other specific videos, please leave a comment down. We read them all. We try and address them all. Or check out our AeroWorks Academy. We'll put a link down below where we cover everything from the Section 333 exemption process filing a COA, what is a NOTAM, how do you file a NOTAM, all kinds of great stuff there. The AeroWorks Academy, again, link down in the description. Thanks again, and we'll see you on the next video.